It's Judgment Day. This is it. Welcome back to another episode of Outcast 2 Icons. It is a massive one today. There is really no two ways about it. So if you have enjoyed the series up to this point, drop a like. That'd be superb. Today we have the cup final, the Coppa Italia final against Milan, as well as our title run-in with big, big stuff on the line here. Now, we may well have not got to the Champions League final, and still part of me thinks it was for the best, particularly as the fact is we weren't good enough to beat Southampton in the first place. And had we sort of fluked our way through that game, I think we would have got absolutely smashed by Atletico. I think it's Atletico in the final anyway. And I think that would have been a real problem for us. And I think we can build back better next season. New goalkeeper, couple of little tweaks here and there. And I think this side really is good enough to challenge for it properly. And that's exciting. With the final games of the season about to take place, we will be endlessly checking the scores in the other games. And you know exactly how we're going to be doing that. Well, it's with the One Football app. We know that going into that last game against Napoli, it's all on us. But during those other matches, there is so much more work to do with scores going in around the grounds. Can other teams do us a favor? Well, we'll be the first to find out with live up-to-date team lineups, transfer news, scores, all the good stuff, the stats, anything you could possibly want. So once again, a massive thank you to OneFootball for sponsoring this video, and you can download the app for free with the link in the top line of the description. But on a side note on the Southampton thing, we all know that they won the Europa League last season, and that was pretty sick. And that was why they got into the Champions League. Yeah, so I had a little look. Turns out that not only did they do that, the year before that, they won the Europa Conference League. This would be ridiculous. Two years ago, they won the Europa Conference League, thus qualifying for the Europa League. They then won the Europa League, thus qualifying for the Champions League. And now they have reached the final of the Champions League. Imagine if they actually won all three European trophies back to back in order. That, that would never, ever happen again. I, I guarantee that will never happen in the rest of this save if it does. Th that would be outrageous. I still don't think they will, though. Anyway, we've had a single game off camera in the league, which I will show you in a sec, and we'll get today's game against Milan. So we were away to struggling Crotone in the league. It was a fairly straightforward run, really. Ector with the ball over the top. Overmars decides to end the goalkeeper's career by dinking one in off the crossbar for 1-0 after 16 minutes, which was a good start from us, exactly what we needed. Candido's ball in, then Overmars with his 20th goal of the year. Back post header made it 2-0 and kind of just killed things off for us. But then, on the hour mark, things got a little bit better as Bruno delivered a gorgeous ball. And well, you know who's on the end of it. Of course, it's Sigge Jonsson doing his thing. I think that was 19 for him as well. And then, in stoppage time, at the end of the second half, the 92nd minute, Cuarto gets the ball eventually, pops it across, and who will be on the end of it but Pierangelo Lanza. 4-0 sass. Pretty much about a perfect game as you like. Overmars smashing it, uh, both Siggy Jonsson and Lanza scoring, which is so nice to see them just doing mad things. And this was there was some rotation in this team as well, so exciting times. What I would say is Milosevic made some, a couple of good saves, uh, saves in this game as well. Not enough to keep his job, but... He'll be second choice next year. Just very quickly, you can see that gives us 80 points. Now, the key thing is, though, Juventus lost 3-1 at Roma during the last match day. Now, that was always going to be a tough game for them, as you can see. But the beautiful thing about it is it now gives us an opportunity to eliminate them from the title race. With our next game in the league being at home against Udinese, if we win that, it's down to us and Napoli. And the problem is we play Napoli on the final day of the season away from home, and they beat us earlier this year. So we have no head-to-head -head advantage over them. The situation for this in the league anyway is a fairly simple one. If Napoli are able to win away at Atalanta and we do our job against Udinese, it's going to come down to us trying to not lose at Napoli on the final day of the season. Because if we were, we would lose the league title on head to head. And I can't bear the thought of it, but it's just how it goes, isn't it? Slightly off topic as well. Empley promoted. Look who's the top scorer for Empley. Yes, it is the same Rocco Simic. I, what on earth? <laughs> anyway, that's enough of that. It's Milan. It's the cup final. Now... We beat Milan 7-2 the last time we played them. And I just have this horrible feeling that it's going to be nothing like that today. I, I don't know what it is. I just kind of don't feel like it's going to go that way. But, you know, you live and learn. Um, Cuarto, I played so we could rest out Glavash for the last game. I'm still going to start Siggy. Like, Lancer is brilliant. I, I, I love him to bits. I do. But... Oh, actually, I tell you what, Siggy Jonsson's form. No, no, just we can't risk him right now. We can't risk Lancer right now. Siggy Jonsson has earned his way into this team right now, quite clearly. But I will be going with Milivojev in the midfield, Believ in the back line. Thompson will not play right back, obviously. That's Mihil Cheya's domain. Uh, Bruno left back. Gregory's back in for this game, which is awesome. Candido did fine, but he's no Troy Greggs. 
Everybody else, though, fairly content with that as a lineup. It's kind of nutty, though. Like, 11, 11, 20, 19, 19. We could have three players get over 20 goals for us this season. I'd be very surprised if Siggy and Gregory don't add at least one more this season. We are missing Granados, though. Like, his goals and his penalties, and more importantly, his assists, I think, are definitely a factor in this team. Another thing that scares me is this is definitely a different system that Milan play. And the one game that we've looked really, really bad in this season, the Fiorentina game away... They played this exact shape, so we do have to be cognizant of that. Now, it could be, it could play out totally differently as they'll be more aggressive, but yeah, without any further ado, let's get going. I think this might be the first cup final that Sassuolo have ever been in, and oh god, I would love to win this. But I just want to come away from this video with some kind of silverware. That was our task at the start of the season, and frankly, we put ourselves in about as good a position as possible. Incredibly, Milan manager is Mihailo Ristic who I'm almost certain I've had as a player on more than one save. Yep, I definitely had him on my Red Star save. Now, we're unbeaten in the last four games against Milan. In addition to that, we, we just have quite a good record. But then their record is not exactly stunning as of right now. They've not won a single game of their last five. They're eighth in the league as well. But that means nothing really when it comes to cup finals. Where are all the fans? Where, where are all the fans? This is a cup final. Fans just aren't interested in the Coppa Italia final, apparently. They just couldn't get down on the game on a Wednesday night. Oh, well, never mind. We'll have to try and win it in front of nobody. That would still be quite some celebration, though, if we were able to come up with the result. I feel like we should be able to. We should be the comfortable favourites for this. Top of the league against eighth place, a team we beat in 7-2 not that long ago. But you just know how these things go. I think he is a brand new manager to the club, so they'll definitely change their style underneath him for sure. Hopefully we can just be strong enough. Glavash tries the ball over the top. Overmars, he's got the first touch. He's surely going to get the shot away! And... I'm sorry. How does that not go over the line? Physics has decided to take a day off as well as the fans. I, I honestly don't know how that didn't go over the line, but more importantly, how it managed to completely stop. <laughs> oh dear, why didn't it bounce off the post? Weird. Okay, well that's um hopefully not a sign of things to come for us here. I'm actually very disappointed that that didn't cross the line. It's managed to hit both posts and somehow not go in. Well, half an hour gone. Not been a classic so far. Milan haven't had a shot yet, which is good. That's what I want to see. Uh, we're definitely in control of the game, but we just need that little bit of extra quality. It's kind of what I expected. We're playing a lot better than we did against Fiorentina when they played like this, though, which is a nice sign of Siggy Johnson knocks it down. Overmars is offside. Pavlish is always making himself available for that pass in the centre as Glavash is just dispossessed by Pegararo, and this is what we cannot have. Oh, what a save. Milosevic does brilliantly there. But to be fair, he's come up clutch when we needed in there. Pavlish's ball in. And it's well... No, it's not well saved. Ramon Uriarte, Sassuolo won. Milan nil in the Coppa Italia final. Uriarte with his fourth goal of the season. Well, we nearly went from disappointment... Of, well, well, nearly disappointment anyway. Great play at one end to great play at the other. Pavlish with the ball in. Uriarte out jumps about four people. And honestly, the Milan goalkeeper has to save that excellent stuff from us there is exactly what we needed if it was going to be a scrappy tight little game because of the system they want to play us getting in front through a set piece is exactly what we needed to do although Siggy Jonsson and Overmars appear to have picked up knocks both of them right before half time that could cost us not just in this game but in the forthcoming games if those injuries are serious well not serious but enough to keep them out because this is a midweek game and we've got Udinese at the weekend so Magnus Nissen and Pierangelo Lanza uh take to the field certainly um decent substitutes to be able to bring on as Perillas through Great tackle. I think that was Uriate again. Wow, that's really bad. In fact, so bad that Magnus Nissen is in behind. He's got to get the shot away. And he does. Magnus Nissen off the bench. 2-0 Sassuolo. Hey, like he may well have lost his place in the team over the last month or so to Tyne and Overmars. But there's no denying that Magnus Nissen... Hello? Okay. There's no denying that Magnus Nissen is still an absolutely incredible striker. Michal Chair with a great ball through, but this is just an instinctive l lashing at the ball, hammering at home. We're 2-0 up. Half an hour away from our first ever major trophy, I think, to be sensible about this. But with 20 minutes to go, a two-goal advantage in the cup final. That is dreadful from Petr Milosevic. And is he about to cost us a goal? No, he's not. But Petr, please, buddy. Four minutes of stoppage time left, two goals up, and controlling the Coppa Italia final. This is about as perfect a performance as we could have asked for today. Brilliant from the lads. It's not been a thrashing. Hasn't had to be. Sadovic and Lanzov completes the game, and we are going to win the Coppa Italia. 12th goal of the season for Pierangelo Lanza. Lovely assist from Dino Sadovic. Lovely to see him getting more and more football this season and never letting me down, really. Uh, we have been in total control of this match. Glavash with a lovely little ball out to the white. There's just Puts this on a plate for Sadovic. And after that, well, Lanza has a simple task. The goalkeeper's once again at fault for that. It's 3 0 Sassuolo in the Coppa Italia final. Come on. Well, there we have it. Sassuolo 3, Milan 0. We are going to win the cup. 
the first piece of major silverware I would say that we've really won in this save, if I'm honest, really. Uh, a couple of, you know, titles in Croatia are not the same as winning the Coppa Italia with Sassuolo in the same season that we've reached the Champions League semi, and there's still more to play for. We have the opportunity to go and win Serie A for the first time in the club's history over the course of the next two games. But at the very least, we've got ourselves a bit of silverware to show for our excellent season. And the guys thoroughly deserve this as they lift the trophy. Please take your time, lads. Come on, up. Up, but there we go. And there they are celebrating the trophy. Petr Milosevic might be the last time that he celebrates a trophy like this as a first team goalkeeper. Unless we can get Syria under our belt as well. What a win for the lads. Right. League games now. <laughs> so the situation is simple. We have to we have to basically win. We beat Udinese, who are 17th in the league at home, a team we always seem to win against. Now, that doesn't mean anything, of course, if we don't do the job on the night. Now, if Napoli were to drop points and we were to win, we would be champions now without having to play now. Well, we would have to play them, but it wouldn't matter. We've just got to do our job here. Win the game and go into that final day of the season knowing, hopefully, that we may not have to do anything. But it's all down to Atalanta and I just don't trust them. I think Napoli will probably win about 4-0. So there are a few tired bodies in here. We did not have a huge rest after the cup final, but there was no way we were going to rotate players for the cup final. Uh, now, in theory, we could get through this game with a slightly rotated side if we have to, hopefully, and then have a fresh squad for the Napoli game, but it is not going to be easy by any means. Uh, Glavash will still start instead of Cuarto just because of match fitness levels. Uh, Candido or Gregory? Oh... Nevedomsky can come in. That's fine. Nevedomsky and Eklu, I'm totally cool with that being our midfield partnership. Mihal Cea needs a rest, but we're going to go for Sadovic instead because I think he's done brilliantly coming in this season. Jose Ramon, though, not for me. I think I'd rather play a slightly more tired Milivojev in here than Jose Ramon, honestly. But we may well have to go with Candido over Troy Gregory for today, and that looks like that's going to be our lineup for today's game, and it should be enough to get us through, I feel like. Obermoz was able to recover from the slight knock he got. Sigurd Jonsson had an extra day on the knocks, unfortunately. Well, I mean, if you ever needed an example of what I mean when I say fairly solid, every single match we've played since we took over at Sotswolo, we have beaten Udinese every time we've played them, which doesn't actually fill me with good confidence for some reason. I do absolutely love the fact that we're able to rotate in Piemisław Nevodomsky and Komi Eklu as our centre midfield partnership, both absolutely outrageous players that are more than happy to just sit. Right then, lads, the task is simple win in front of the home fans it would be so nice to win the title in front of our home fans today it, it really really would but that relies heavily on napoli doing some good stuff or rather not doing good stuff it seems that we've kind of forgotten all about roma who at the moment are moving into only two points behind us at the top of the league uh, just out of nowhere have returned to the battle a, a team i'd completely forgotten about as far as the title race was concerned over mars now he's got bodies forward but he's got support and he can go himself here he, yeah, not the best. Well, they're all winning now. It's up to us. As Overmars is there! And it's 1 0 Sassuolo on 35 minutes. Great ball in from Candido, and Overmars smashes in his 21st goal of the season. For a guy that basically, oh God, Angelo, oh, he's, he's hurt. That's not ideal. But we are winning. And that's really the most important factor right now is we're winning against Udinese. The other teams are winning too, though. So half time, we've got the goal that we needed through, of course, who else than Overmars? But every other title rival is also winning. Now, if we were to win, it would remove Juve and Roma from the equation and just leave Napoli. Right, we're a bit all disjointed here, and it's a good save from Milosevic. Needed to be. Udinese have gone 4-3-3, so this is about to get very stretched, and we know it. And it's, oh, just wide. I think from Domski, it's 2-0 Napoli now. So they are throwing everything at us now uh, with three strikers up top, but it will, hopefully, leave us some spaces. But these defenders are going to have their work cut out, but when we win the ball back in these areas, they're going to be one man short in midfield, which is going to give us that little bit of extra space. Oh, Overmars, can he finish it? Surely? No, he can't. Yes, he can on the rebound. It's 2-0 to Sassuolo. 22nd goal of the season for Timon Overmars, and he has done it time and time again. It's 2-0. Come on. That is exactly what we needed right now. And just a little cushion. The defender makes the mistake. Overmars almost loses it there, but comes back to it. It's a really tight angle to finish that one, but he's put it in the back of the net. And hopefully that's going to eliminate two teams from the title race. In other news, Juventus have thrown away a two-goal lead and are now 3-2 down at home against Sampdoria. So that's fun. Um, they're basically eliminating themselves from the title race as things go. 2-0 is good, but a third goal would... Oh, God. Oh, God. Yuri Mancuso gets one back for Udinese. Very much against the run of play. It's 3-1 to Napoli now in the other game. But we have got a bit of worries to deal with now. Uh, we've been in total control of this game. But Napoli, have, not Napoli, Udinese have just found a tiny little gap here. He's just run off the back of, I think, Milivojev. And it's just a good finish. Milosevic probably could save that, though. We're going to just move to kill this game now that it's 2-1. Don't want to take any risks of conceding another goal. We'll just slow things down, waste time for the next 10 minutes, and just sort of game manage the hell out of this if we can anyway. I think that's going to be the plan from here on out. 
30 seconds is exactly what we've got left on the clock here. Nevedomsky needs to win this, though, just to keep us in possession for the next 30 seconds. That's all we have to do. Just hang on to the possession here. Do not let this slip now. Sadovic, that is really, really poor from Dino Sadovic. I, I don't know what he's thinking. Milosevic is, oh, God. Oh, and Dean Fisher has missed it there. That could have easily been the moment that we lost the title, as Milosevic will hang on to it, and that is it. It's a Swolo 2, Udinese 1, uh, far closer than it had any right to be, but that's how it goes. Sadovic made a terrible decision at the end there, and it damn near cost us, and it looked like Milosevic was getting ready to throw something away there, but nevertheless, we do get the result. Come on. Press just asked me why I substituted Timon Overmars on a hat-trick. I'm like, because he's injured, you mugs. But nevertheless, that's the situation. Going into the final day of the season, Avoiding defeat at Napoli will see us crowned champions. It's judgment day. This is it. If we avoid defeat away at Napoli, we are champions of Syria. No matter what happens elsewhere, that's the situation. Uh, I think there's a strong... If we, I think if we were to avoid defeat, I think there's a very strong chance that Roma would actually leapfrog them and go second in the end, which would be odd, uh, just because they sort of disappeared so heavily from the title race. Look at the gap, though, between the top four and everybody else. Brescia looked like they might just slightly fall short, but you, you never know. Maybe they could come up with something on the final day against Samp and results elsewhere could help them sneak into Europe. And it'd be really nice to see them uh, with Augusto Rivas do that. But I think he will be next... I think he will be back next season and playing for us as the backup to Troy Gregory. I think he's had a good year out on loan and he's developed really well in that year. Now we must rotate the team around a little bit and I'm totally fine to do that. We've got to bring some lads back in again. That's not what I'm going to be doing. Siggy will of course be coming back on the right hand side. Lancer's technically available but he did pick up a slight knock and obviously I just want to go with Siggy for now. Pavlish and Nevadomsky absolutely not in a million years is that happening. We'll go with Milivojev into the midfield to give us a little extra defensive stability there and Believ back to defence and that of course means that Mihalce will be able to come back in at right back as well. So the rest players we managed to get away with it against Udinese so Gregory's back Mihil Chea's back Siggy Jonsson is back some just extra bodies for this game Milivojev in midfield will hopefully keep us a bit more defensively stable in there as well and you know what the guys provided some great assists mostly to tie in an overmars this season pretty standard shape for Napoli uh we've got to keep an eye on the likes of Lewis Ward who I might just go after a bit more this is Pietro Paolo Faricello 17 years old ridiculous player absolutely outrageous Got him in a scout report a few weeks ago, and well, not a few months ago rather, and I didn't actually think he was playing in the league for them, but apparently he is. Moment of truth, friends. Okay, so everybody seems up for this one, which is the main thing. So I think I just noticed as well in the pre-match, it said that Milivoy was very much looking forward to his battle against the uh, the youngster I just showed you, and I'm guessing that's maybe Milivoy on him for the game could make a huge difference. Also, something I completely forgot to mention: we got nearly seven million quid for winning the Coppa Italia. That's a huge prize pool, actually. Judgment Day, I suppose, for us here. Um, Milivoyev versus Faticiello is probably going to be one of the big battles in this game that's going to matter the most. I think our plan here is just to come and keep things tight. If we could grab a goal and get... If we get in front in this game, that would be so damn useful for us. But the lads need to be on their, on their A game. We did, of course, lose to Napoli at home earlier this season. Joy down this left-hand side yet, but... Oh, nice ball in the side for Glavash. If we could just roll this across to... Ooh, I wonder if you could have found Milivoy if they're Bruna. Siggy Johnson's header is in the top corner. Napoli nil, Sassuolo won. 20 goals for the season. For, and look at the celebration there from Stimir Un Siggy Johnson. Sassuolo legend, the top scorer of all time, might well have just scored the goal that will win uh, Sassuolo their first ever Scudetto. Great ball in from Bruno. What a header that is. He has been ridiculous this season and he deserves every moment of the plaudits. We've given ourselves a lifeline in that we can screw up once in this game and not have a huge difficulty with it. Not That is not a foul! There's no way that's a foul. What a load of nonsense. Dinko Pavlish looks like he just slides in and wins that ball absolutely inch perfectly there. And now they're going to get a chance. And it is going to be the 17-year-old from the spot who's missed the penalty. Napoli justice, I say there. That's a really nice ball from Believ, actually. Glavash. Finally got a little bit of space here. If Overmars can find the run. Oh, Siggy's gone past one man. Run the side for Gregory! Yes! In off the post and it's 2-0! So wow, both Gregory and Siggy Johnson have completed their 20th goals of the season in the same game. <laughs> Come on! It's 2-0. This all comes from that pass out from the back from Believ. It just breaks the Napoli midfield. But then Siggy Johnson has so much work. And this is an absolute world-class pass. And Gregory with the gorgeous finish in off the post. Two goal advantage in the first half. Come on! In fact, there's still an option here with Milivoy. Oh, wow. Look at the patience of the lads. He's still got it. Glavash, uh, and that... Hang on. So just to clarify, that wasn't a penalty. Okay, sure. Why not, eh? Uh, <laughs> it just looked to me like they just cleaned out Glavash and didn't touch the ball. 
But sure, why the hell not, eh? Referee's trying his best to give Napoli the win here, but it's not happening for him, and it's 2-0 to Sassuolo. Siggy and Troy with the goals. Siggy with the assist on Troy Gregory's goal, too. Glavash, nice. One touch stuff. Glavash. Round the side for Sigge Jonsson. And it's saved by the goalkeeper. That was a great chance. Glavash. Bruna drops it in. Middle Voyev should have the beating of his defender here. And oh, go on, Dan. Oh, great start from Ruben Nilsson. We've actually probably got better giving it a go here. It's a good ball out wide. We've got to be careful, though. Three goals in the next 20 minutes for Napoli. And things start to change. And there's the first of them. Thiago Tomas. They haven't really threatened much in this game, but now they do have a lifeline in the title race, and we've got to be very, very careful at this point. We've just started to get a little bit complacent there. We missed a couple of chances at the start of the second half. It's a great ball in from Rekia, and Michal Chea has just, she's just been outjumped. Another goal back soon for Napoli could spell disaster, because you know the heads would start to go as Hernandez is throwing goal for Napoli, and he's missed the target. Even though it would take two more goals for Napoli to actually turn this around, I'm still going to shut this game down. I just don't want to take the risks of them pulling themselves back into this game. We just need to be sensible from, from here on out. Oh, God. Uh, wait, what? Yeah, it's offside. Phew. Bruna. Uh, could you... What? What are you doing? I don't know why he runs across his man there, and Napoli are going to get a chance to get back in the game, and they've missed the chance from Chupo. Hernandez is ball in, and it's saved by the goalkeeper. Milosovic does, Milosovic, Milosovic does brilliantly. A minute to go. Surely they're not going to score twice in the next minute. I still like to win the game on the night. Uh-oh, uh Chupo rolls it through, and he's actually scored. Are you kidding me? Brilliant Pasai equalizes for Napoli. Well, they finally found something, but hopefully there's still enough time, or well, not enough time left on the clock for them to do anything. I, I don't know how this has even happened. How is he not offside? And the angle that you should not be allowing a player to score from that angle. Are you joking? Yes! Napoli 2, Sassuolo 2. We certainly gave up the luck towards the end of that. Well, not luck, just poorness towards the end of the game, but we have managed to get away with it. Those early goals in the first half have made a huge difference to us and allowed the shaky legs to come towards the end of the game. Still, scary times when stuff like that happens, but nevertheless, this could have been so different had that penalty gone in, really. It's the simple, tiny little things like that. Napoli 2, Sassuolo 2, but Sassuolo are going to be champions of Italy for the first time in the club's history and do a league and cup double. We may well have been knocked out of the Champions League in unfortunate, well, not even unfortunate, in sour circumstances, but it doesn't matter because a league and cup double for the boys, that's what you like to see. So there we go, our first league title in Italy. Ironically, with five less points than we got last season. And I realise that definitely does look worse, but we overall, I still think for me, look better. Um, we scored more goals and conceded less goals than anybody else in the entire division, I think. Oh, no, no. I th well, certainly expected-wise, and we were right up there, and I think we deserved the league title in the end. Just brilliant from everybody involved. Um, maybe there's an element of luck in that other teams didn't do as well this season. Also, losing four home games this year definitely not good enough but i think honestly just a good goalkeeper that alone could probably get us three or four more wins next year if we're that good because you can see how easy that would be to improve over in la liga i mean real madrid win the league title by 14 points that's mental uh they're also in the europa league final because somehow they didn't get out the group but there you go atletico the other the champions league finalists actually come third that year uh with valencia in the two down go Getafe, valladolid and celta vigo on what well, looks like to be head to head Interesting that Osasuna had the top score in the league. I just had a look. He's not bad. That's terrible finishing, though. In the Premier League, Chelsea win the league for the first time in a while, actually. Arsenal second, Spurs come third, and Man City do get into the uh, Champions League, at least. Southampton, Champions League finalists, come sixth, obviously. Uh, Forest, Watford, and Villa go down. Over in League Oh, it's, uh, yeah, PSG win it by eight points. Although, it's not the, I mean, they've had bigger gaps, that's for sure. It's certainly a, a downward season for them, maybe. Only 98 points. Lyon and Monaco qualifying for Europe in there as well. Marseille comes sixth, uh, sorry, fifth in the end. Saint-Etienne, despite all their money spent, can't even get in the Champions League at the moment. Le Havre, Rheim, and Nancy uh, all go down. And in the Bundesliga, Dortmund are champions for the second season? No, third season in a row. Bayer Leverkusen and Leipzig qualify for the Champions League along with Bayern Munich. Hertha and Augsburg get Europe. I don't know what this is. I think maybe because of the cup stuff. Schalke are uh, looking like they're likely to get relegated again. Uh, Karlsruhe and Werder Bremen are also relegated. Vilesh to come second. I wonder if that's enough to get them promoted or not. They might be back in the, th the second tier. The same can sadly not be said about Ermis Oradipu, who have been relegated from the top flight in Cyprus after a fairly long stay again. I sense they'll be back, but it's a shame. Second have gone one step better than last year, but definitely seem to have settled into being a bit average at the moment, uh, sadly. Pushkas win the league again. Uh, Aferich Varas still haven't been promoted again. 
but they have now, in fact, they have been promoted back to the top flight after what feels like forever in the second tier. Dino Zagreb are kind of back to their old ways a little bit at the moment, but ooh, new top scorer, interesting. No face either, so he must be a youth player there, potentially. Okay, that's a complete lie. He's 29 years old. So, here endeth our best season in this save by a comfortable margin. I really do feel like with the right signings in the summer, this team can go the whole way. Uh, or certainly go very, very close to going the whole way and look that little bit more confident. I think striking options are looking fantastic. Overmars is killing it right now. I, I think a new goalkeeper is absolutely crucial this summer. Uh, we'll talk more about this in the analysis video tomorrow, of course. I also think maybe a new attacking midfielder um, because Granados is great, but I think maybe there's an opportunity to potentially expand that role a little bit more. And that might be an area to invest some money in, potentially. We'll have to see what kind of comes up in the summer because there's tons of players in those roles. If I can just find the right one. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this season, and I really hope you have, drop a like on the video. That would be tremendous. I realize this might have been quite a long episode, but hey, you know, we had to show all the good stuff. Um, that would be fantastic. Yeah, uh, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you guys tomorrow for the analysis video. And then on Sunday for the transfer window as we begin season 18 of Outcast to Icons with Sassuolo. I mean, there's a, there's a chance it could be the final year of the save. I just don't know. Anyway, uh, I'll see you guys very, very soon. Thank you so much for watching. Hold your gun. Capybara. Bye-bye.